Hey guys, welcome back to Track Yards. I'm Captain Foley. And I'm Commander Collins. We are going into the future-ish of the Trek universe-ish, if you include the online space. Talk about a ship. That, that's true. That is, There's no ish there. I was going to say, there's no ish there. <laughs> it's a ship. It is. And not only that, but it's a Klingon ship. We're kind of, you know, we, we, we like looking at all kinds of ships. We don't look at a lot of... Uh, other ships beside Federation, a lot of our originals and stuff are Federation ships, but it's always nice to kind of look at something that's, you know, Klingon, Romulan, and today we have a fantastic Klingon ship, um, and it was designed by Hector Ortiz, if I recall correctly, and uh, who actually did the model, Sam? Well, the Lightworks, and you might have heard of them, I hope you've heard of them, it's Tobias Richter's company, who's done some incredible CGI, and he's a, he's a freelance for uh, Star Trek Online to help them with some of their bits and bobs, he gave them the DS9 model, etc, etc, and so he's very good at crisp geometry and all that jazz. This is one of his companies, and this is a Vora, Vor Ral Battle Cruiser. Have you seen this ship before? I definitely haven't, um, and I think this Tobias's company means it's newish, or at least newer than most. What do you think? Well, I hadn't seen it before now, and I think this is very impressive. Uh, it beefs up that Klingon aesthetic and just adds quite a bit of detail and bulk that just makes it seem kind of menacing. So I think it's a good next generation version, like advancement on like the Vorcha and things like that. Um, but still taking the aesthetic almost back to like a TOS look, which is what the way it's kind of like the proportions. So yeah. kind of like how in, in Sartre Picard, everyone uses the Discovery shuttles. They're obviously not from Discovery era. They must be modern made. So just like this, they've gone for retro sleek of looking like a D7. Just like they've gone retro sleek looking like a 200 year old design. Um, now when I see this ship beyond the natural, obviously it's Klingon. For some reason, the way it's painted and the way, especially the wings are separate, it feels to me like a reptile with scales. As an overwhelming feeling. Which, which makes me instantly think, ooh, it's a Gorn-Klingon hybrid. They had an alliance at one point, like the Stormbird was for Romans. This is that sort of shit. I didn't see that, but now that you've said it, it kind of does have a gecko, alligator, weird kind of vibe to it. Um, and I kind of like that. I kind of like that the uh, the Gorn would maybe have an alliance. Because um, they the Gorn and the Romulans have a big, you know, thing going on so it would make sense for them to team up and work with the Klingons perhaps because it, re it really is the way the separation of the pylon plates is if the pylons are much more smooth and, and the conventional plates and then going into that bit that connects them to the primary hull which is now gray if that was still green you wouldn't have that it would just be oh it's mostly gray mostly green with gray accenting but those bits help it pop um, and disclaimer here guys that you know Sergeant Online has a very limited polygon count with their models and so it's very efficient so what you get is what you get but it's more about the design than all the full detailing but they do get a lot a lot of bang for their buck <clears throat> and it's definitely i mean is it is it too close to a d7 design or a vorture no. no okay no no i think it's i think it's very well done and very it rides that line a little bit mm -hmm. of being too close but it, it just it's instantly says klingon and more advanced yeah, so. and in fact, I really like the front, the head, the the different shape. That I've always liked the idea of the watch having different modules for different reasons. I think it, it it's nice to see that brought to life. But Stuart, you do see windows, but as we've learned, windows aren't always a, a, a genuine, genuine indicator of scale. So I've got a scale render here for you, which compares it to things like the the Vorcha, the Neg, the Enterprise D, the Sovereign, the Dideridex, the Prometheus. Where do you think this ship fits on that line? Well, judging that it's Star Trek Online and the last two Federation ships we've talked about have been have been wrong, um, I'm thinking it's a pretty big battle cruiser, uh, Vorcha or maybe Negvar sized because that would make a lot of sense. But at the same time, like I said, um, with the scaling for Star Trek Online, bigger seems to be better. So I'm gonna guess this is the size of a Dideridex, just a little smaller maybe. You know what, Stuart? Your gut was right this time. Next picture, it is just a nice, gentle vulture sized <laughs> The first time you don't go with your gut. Uh, I love this scale. It is beautiful. The Klingons have always not necessarily pushed that boundary. They've always kind of been not uh, below the curve, but I mean, look at the vulture compared to the D. There is a size discrepancy. The E and the Negra are a little bit different, but um, so I like this isn't trying to reinvent the wheel. 
Although it makes me laugh now, this top view, the, the wings, the, the, the engines look as if they're kind of going in. They're like they're flat. They're kind of as if they have an angle. I like it. Um, it's again, it's not overblown. Like I second guessed myself and mm-hmm. thought it would be just based on the two last two we mm-hmm. filmed. So no, I think it's I think it's in a very appropriate scaling, and uh, I, I love it. I love it in this shot. Actually, it just blends right in. I do wish the green was more of a Klingon green. I I I get why to make it different. If that had just been hue shifted a smidge, I think that would make a ton of difference personally. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. I agree. Uh, but the side view, it does change the feel for me. I, I, like, I think I like the head more. But the secondary hull, the engines now feel too big. Well, they kind of look like flipped uh, Vorture engines. But there's something about the back half that feels out of proportion. I mean, the scaling's fine again. I think the scaling's great. Uh, but yeah, the engines kind of... I don't like the shape that they use there. But at the, at the front, anyway, it just... Yeah. It's like a, a D7 basic shell, but really is a beefed up Vorture with a sleeked out Vorture top pod. And then for some reason, like three times the bigger cells. So. I, I think the scaling works. I love it compared to the Sovereign class. I think it's like, mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. would be an interesting battle to see. Mm-hmm. Those mm-hmm. two tangling would be awesome. But it doesn't but, work quite as well from the side. No, not quite not quite as well. But let's see from the back three quarters. You can see the, new en- you can see the engine pods, which are very small and very TOS feeling. There seems to be no torpedo launcher between the impulse engines anymore. You know, there's a lot of things not there, uh, which you'd think would be on this because they're Klingons and this is more advanced, right? So it's also a game where they need all the they actually have you know all their weapons visible. So I like the uh, cutouts in the back of the the wing areas, secondary hull. I think that really looks fantastic and it looks super aggressive as well. Um, like a razor, like a saw blade just coming at you. And that's, a, you know, I know the Discovery ships were trying to have a very aggressive feel. It was the wrong sort of aggressive feel. That works better. It's simpler and works better. And it combines with the, the front bit of the, of the wing, which has another, like, sleek curve, which, again, feels like kind of a blade curve. And because it's in this black color compared to the green, it stands out as, as this nice, like, double-edged armor weapon feel, which is nice. It works really well, actually. Yeah, and the in- engines don't look bad from here either. The nacelles, I think they, like the back of them, I love the way that that's designed. Uh, they're very, so. uh, they're very D five meets Vorture feeling. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can even see some um, D seven Katinga influences in there as well. Uh, but the next view from the bottom, yeah, I like this. This looks a lot sleeker. It looks a lot thinner, and more maneuverable. That's the vibe I get from this. Uh, yeah, I do, and I like the the head module. I like the like spine or well not spine but like chin i guess i don't know the goatee of the head uh, of this thing looks kind of cool and even the fins at the back although those are very as soon as i see fins like that i think of the shinzo um just flip them on up and put them on the top uh but there they work i don't know what purpose those would serve necessarily well they're also on the d4 um to buy koji so i mean there are some you know holdovers from other things yeah, but I do like the uh, the weapons placements on the, the, the front of the head there, um, and right at the front of the uh, the wings, those are really impressive looking. And at the connection point between the nacelles and the pylons, you can see on the left side, which is very D7 influence. That's good, yeah, good, I like it. Hmm, okay. Uh, next view though from the front, now that is an aggressive Ooh. <laughs> and yet advanced looking ship. That is a, that is a, that's like... You, that either says to me, somebody tried to make it, tried to steal the D7 design and make it look like a not Trek ship because it's so sleek, or said, right, we're going to do a really like futuristic D7 and you'll take it. That's what that says to me. Like everything's the same but different. The shapes here are really, really nice. And yeah, I, I kind of get a hammerhead vibe from Star Wars with the front of that um, head section. Uh, but you see the weapons placements. Uh, this is aggressive looking. You do see the, the the pods very well here, and I like the fact that there's two of them. One on the base of the neck that looks like it can slide forward. I mean, I don't know if it does, but uh... yeah. And, it, and it, what's nice about this is that you, the D7 is a is a it, it is, there's lots of both organic ball style shapes and lots of very hard edges. This there's a lot of those slicing edges in the wings, but almost everything in the head and the primary hull have that smooth feel and it's a very interesting 
two types of feels, but it does really combine well here. The the and I, I guess the fact they're also color coded kind of works too. <laughs> ah, see, next picture it kind of falls apart a little bit. It does look like that module on the neck or the boom. It looks like it moves. It looks like it's been moved up a bit there, although it probably hasn't. And the nacelles, the front of them, that angle, is just kind of odd. I would fix that. There's something about that I don't like, especially from the the profile view. Mm. Yeah, this this view makes me feel very thin. It's weird. This is very this this ship changes so much in different views, so much. And the next picture, we get the aft, just to kind of double check there's no torpedo launchers, and you get a, a sense of those back spine thing, or the slices. I, I really like the slices. I like how they stick out the fins and the front fin, and how that kind of gives it a, a, a sweeping feel. It's cutting through the air almost. I like it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, definitely aggressive looking. Uh, next view, though, is the direct top, high detail. You know, without orthographic, you kind of hide a lot of those dimensionality things. How do you, what do you think it looks like now? You just just see it raw. Looks great. It would look great on a Starfleet Battles counterpiece. <laughs> and again, it looks like the thing on the boom slides because it looks like it's the back now. Uh, um, but yeah, no, I think it's great. Uh, the, the, just the aggressive nature of it, it just looks mean. Just seeing the silhouette is like such hard lines. It just works. But it's also not just that. It's not the pointy of the Prometheus. The fact that that head is points to the side, but there's no direct point forward, works so well. It's not just the, you know, oh, look, I'm pointing forward. You know, there's some some thought gone in here. Um, um, and the next picture, the last picture, is 13. We see it coming at camera. We saw all the, all the many, many glowing weapons and such. Um, and again, it feels a little bit different as well. I think it feels a little more gorn y in this one for some reason. Don't know. Well, this is the, this is one of the classic views of the the Katinga from the motion picture, you know, and it really, it it it's just is super impressive. I do like the the nacelles, the way they angle out like that, as opposed to the D seven, which kind of goes down and then the nacelles come back in. This is more simplistic and yet maintains the look, but feels a little bit more aggressive, you know. Hector Ortiz, man, you just knocked them out of the park, and then Tobias Richter, or at least his team. Did a good job put together. Yeah, well done, guys. As we said before, Star Trek Online is a hell of a good game. And I was there open beta. And I was there when they made the first person expansion. Uh, it's come so far. And with the amount of voice talents in it from the show, it's incredible. I mean, they've got more voice talent than any any other project they've ever had, if you add them all together. And hundreds of hours of, of content, especially in these times. Go play it. Spend some time. It's easy to download. Not the biggest PC requirement because it's an old game. But still looks reasonably nice. And, and it's got fun spaceship combat. So do go play uh, and do sponsor the Eagle Moss, or do, do get the Eagle Moss Starship, Starship, Star Trek Online, there you go, uh, line when that comes out, or has already come out, or is about to come out even more. Buy those if you want. Those are good trips. That's right. And you can save yourself money on Eagle Moss and stuff down below. Check out the description. There's lots of great ways to support us down there. Patreon, there's Patreon. You can join the channel. Um, and you can go to our Teespring store, save yourself money and get my ships. Lots of great stuff in the description. And it's a great way to help us and, and uh, help out the channel. And you can also join our lives so you can super chat and support us that way as well, as well as have your voice heard and be part of the community. Be there with us. You know, we make a lot of videos. Join in, say hi. We, we do read comments. Say, say what you think of this ship in the comments down below. I want to hear a paragraph of why you love it, why you hate it, or why you're ambiguous. All right, guys, until next time, just make sure you hit that like button, and we'll see you next time. I'm Captain Foley. I'm Hong Kong. Bye, guys. Bye guys.